Hey guys, welcome to The Witch in Hair. So today, we're going to be talking about protection magic in Irish witchcraft. In my studies of Irish folk magic, I've come across three reasons to protect oneself. Usually, it's protection against fairies, witchcraft, and illnesses. Protection against witches was very important, as any curse cast against you could be detrimental to your livelihood. Witches often stole milk and butter, as well as making their crops fail, which could leave a family in turmoil. In the modern world, we can use this knowledge to protect ourselves against other witches who may wish to do us harm, like casting hexes or curses. The rowan tree is an extremely protective plant to the Irish. Probably one of the best plants to use in your magic, the rowan tree protects against witchcraft, spirits and evil people. Hanging a branch above your door will protect your home against them. You could create a witch's ladder by tying nine branches of rowan into it for a modern touch and hang it by your front door. Wearing rowan, such as tying the berries together to wear as a bracelet, can act as a travelling charm of protection. Rowan trees planted in cemeteries are said to protect the dead against evil spirits. Mountain ash is another tree that protects against witchcraft. However, it was more often used to protect items, as the branches were soft enough to bend and weave around an item that you wish to protect. It was very common to weave mountain ash around milk pails, but in modern witchcraft you can weave it around anything you can think of if you feel it could be under attack by another witch. A good example could be weaving the branches around a puppet of yourself or a loved one, if there's a chance you might be cursed by someone you know. The branches then symbolically protect you from a potential curse. Once dried, any part of the rowan tree can be added to spells, such as jars and charm bags, to add protection into your spell. With such a versatile magical plant, rowan is a must-have for all kinds of protection in Irish magic. The hazel tree is another protective plant that can guard you from or even banish witchcraft and evil spirits, particularly demons. Hazel can be used in much the same way as rowan can, and it would be fantastic to keep a branch on hand during divination or spirit work to protect you from demons and evil spirits. If you cut a stick of hazel on Beelt in the morning, which falls on May 1st, the stick can be used as a wand to cast circles in order to keep spirits out. Vervain is another great herb to protect against witchcraft. However, it is best gathered on the rising of the Dog Star, also known as Sirius, when the sun and moon are not visible in the sky. This possibly means it is gathered on the nights of the Dark Moon. An offering of fruit or honey to the earth in return is also a must. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, and druids seem to have associated Vervain with Sirius. Vervain is used in protection, but also in divination and astral projection. You can drink it as a tea, anoint your tools or home with water infused with vervain, or burn it as an incense, and it will help you with these magical workings. Foxglove is another beautiful herb that not only protects against witchcraft but also against fairies. Grow it outside of your home for protection, or you can dry the flowers and use them in spell jars and sachets. Please keep in mind that foxglove is very poisonous, and proper gloves must be worn when handling. Never drink this as a tea or burn as an incense. Black cat hair is another protector against witchcraft and spirits. Gather the hair ethically from a pet or from an ethical seller and use it in spell jars, sachets and poppets. On Bealt in the Morning, a festival that celebrates the beginning of summer that falls on May 1st, primroses were gathered and scattered at the front door to keep fairies away. Bealtaine was a time where the veil between our world and the other world was thin and so fairies with bad intentions were very active and caused mischief. Fairies were known to carry people away, especially children, or steal valuable goods. People would be very nervous about travelling at night for this reason, and so if one had to travel from their home to another, they would bring red coal from the fire with them to protect them against fairies. When a woman finishes milking her cow, it was common to put her thumb in the milk and then make the sign of the cross on the cow's side to protect them against witchcraft. In modern workings, we could do the same by dipping our thumbs in moon water, anointing oils, or even milk if you wanted, and draw the pentacle or any protective symbol you wish on yourself, other people, pets, or items for protection. There are a few methods to protect against illnesses. Tying spiders up in a bag and wearing it around the neck, wolf skin worn around the body as a girdle, and three milk-white hairs of a greyhound tied up and worn as an amulet. Despite this list being quite short, the list of ways to heal from illness are abundant. 
and I will be creating another video based on healing in Irish witchcraft very soon. To protect against the evil eye, wear a red rag or ribbon around the neck or wrist. A red scarf would be suitable. You can protect your pets too by tying a red cloth around their necks or attach one to their collars. The evil eye is a kind of unintentional curse cast by someone who's jealous of you, gives a backhanded compliment or gives you a malevolent glare. The evil eye concept is found in many cultures all over the world. On Nimmuk, a festival that celebrates the beginning of spring and the new milk on February 1st, people would create Bridget's crosses in honour of Goddess Bridget or Saint Bridget in more recent times. The cross is possibly an old pagan symbol, representing the sun when tilted to look more like an X, and these crosses were hung over the front door to protect the house against fire. Every year on Imok, new crosses were made and the old ones were burned to ensure that continuation of that protection. To protect oneself while travelling, pluck ten blades of yarrow, keep nine and cast a tenth away to the spirits. You can do this by burning it. Then. Put the nine leaves under your heel, in your stocking on your right foot before travelling. So, that's all I have for you today, and I hope you found this video useful. Keep an eye out for more videos in my Irish Folk Magic series. Any questions that you have, please leave them in the comments below. Gurumahagut, agus langfull.